Hi, I am back to continue working on my freeform textile art piece. I think I'm finally ready to tackle the piece at the top where I attack the doily down and I'm kind of figuring out some things to put there and I will show you what I have accomplished so far. Okay, so yesterday I worked on this piece here. I got it stitched down. I still haven't decided if I'm going to let that loose. I think I probably am and I'm probably going to fray this some more so I have the loose threads, but I'm just letting that sit for now. And then I added the beads just kind of randomly. And I just, I really love the way you only see the sparkle sometimes. And then I did play around with doing some little bullion knots down here. And I love them. They're done with uh, just two strands of embroidery floss and a small needle. So it's going to take me time, but I know I'm going to go along the, the entire part of couching and do some more of those because I just, I love the effect. And I think that's all I did down there. But today, oh, and I'm thinking, I'm thinking about, let's see, I'm going to pull you back. I'm thinking about taking some roving and just kind of adding it in a few places, maybe up top. And maybe down here. So you would have a piece at the top and of course stitch down on some other stuff with it. Kind of a piece here and a piece down here. So I don't know, maybe, maybe not, but I'm thinking about that. The other thing I found when I cleaned off my desk was this little bit of the sari silk yarn that I had cut off. And I'm thinking I might just stitch it down in here for some more texture. So I'll bring you back down now. Maybe. I'm thinking on that. I'm not sure. A little bit of the brown too that I cut off, but I think I think I would stick with the white. But today, let's think about what to do here. So I'm I'm not sure what I'm going to do with this netted part. I could weave some yarns through it. I could tack it down some more. I could do little knots in the little sections. I'm just going to have to wait and see as the rest of the piece evolves. The only thing I need to make sure I do is I want to remember that I'm going to fold this forward because I want those frayed edges and stitch that down so that I can put a twig through the top. So I need a clustery kind of thing to put here. And I just have all these little scraps I've been playing with. I want to figure it out and then I'm going to do like I did down here. I'm going to stitch it together before I stitch it down. So again, I'm thinking I've got the white coming in here. If I can have my little lace kind of pointing to the white, I don't know, it just makes me happy to do that. So that's what I'm going to do. And I've got, I got all kinds of things. So I've got this. I just kind of want to get a feel for the layout. Okay, I've got this lace here, which was like this. This is old lace that had been rusted. Actually, it's not old. It's um, nylon stretchy lace, but I rusted it and it got some really nice color. And then I just took my seam ripper to get rid of the straight lines. So I'm going to want that in there somewhere. And then the same dark lace. I had just a little bit of it left that I kind of had elsewhere. So I kind of want to keep them together. And this is some more of the sorry silk waste that comes off the edges of the ribbons when you do them. So I could kind of clump it together, but I'm thinking I like the idea of something dangling. So if we put a little bit up there and kind of dangle the rest. So I'm really liking the idea of something kind of dangling here. And I definitely think this lace is, is in the right area because I want to have the white going to the white. Now, if I want something else to kind of dangle with it, maybe. If I do that, I'm going to want a third something. Let's see. I just have all my little scraps. I just... 
you know, when I clean off the desk after a project, I just put them in these little trays and dig through them. Let's put some cordage I made. I'm thinking something fuzzy. You guys know I like to take my jute and twine and separate it. Or if you've seen any of my, my lives where I'm doing clusters, that's something I like to do. All right, maybe. If it could go the whole, I don't know. We won't know until we try. What's funny is when I started this piece, I was thinking I was going to get to the point that I could add like some sticks, but you know, the more I work on it, the more I feel like it's going to be too busy if I do that. So I'll just have to make another project, won't I? All right, I don't like dealing with that. Let's see, what else do we have? This is, I think this is paper twine. I don't think that's going to give me the look I want. Nope. Well, let's keep digging. Um, something like that might work, part of that. I could take another thing like that. I uh, could just do some threads. Sometimes you just have to audition a bunch of things until you get where you want to go. Oh, this is a different piece of uh, something to separate. This fuzzy might be right and it brings my brown in. Yeah. This is nylon of some kind that was... Uh, part of a handle, I think, for some samples from the upholstery shop. All right, it's not really going to be a long dangle, but it might be a good addition up here. It might be something to come out this direction just a little bit. All right, so I have to decide, do I still want a third? I don't want, if the Caesar has to be one or three. Um, that's too skinny. I like the idea of threads. Maybe. Maybe. Maybe it's not those threads. Maybe I need threads a different color. Or maybe, where's my little brown that I cut off? Maybe that. It's too short. It's too short because I would want it up higher. But I have more of that yarn. So let's see. Um, hmm. So what if the light piece came back around here? I don't think so. I think I'm feeling like it's too heavy. So perhaps we just have the one dangle. And anything else that we want to have make things pop, we do it with stitches. Oh, I could try this. It's a nice long piece of, this is like the sheer material that they make uh, curtains out of. But let's see what that looks. Sometimes these things shred really well and sometimes they're just kind of so-so. And that, you know, depending on how they shred, then that tells me how I'm going to use them. So I could do something like, you know, put this under the edge, but it just feels too much. There's nothing wrong with this. I could definitely do something with it, but I'm not going to use it on this piece. All right, so I think what I've decided is it's going to be a simple little cluster with a single bit of this hanging down. I might have to tack it a little bit. I want it coming below the doily. I know that, so I need to make sure I give myself as much length as possible. I'm going to take that out. All right, so now I need a color thread. I think this would be a good place to use brown. Okay, so now this is always the tricky part, is figuring out how you're going to get enough of it attached together so that it's one piece to go down. It doesn't have to be. I could totally just tack these down randomly like that. But I really think 
I want it to feel like it's more all of one piece. And this one, maybe I flip it around. I like something going over the top though. Ah, maybe go this way. Well, maybe I do this other piece as well. Let's see what we feel about that. Let's just cut a small part of it and get rid of those straight edges. To me, this is just a great way to be able to use up a lot of laces that maybe you wouldn't think about using because you totally change the look of them. You've you know, got some color on them. I'm hitting the really rusty parts there. And then you get rid of the straight edges and they look completely different. And you can lay them flat, you can gather them up. Hmm. I kind of think maybe, maybe this is it. And maybe I won't be able to, to do this one that way. I might have to actually stitch this one down as it is. Oh, I see what's bugging me is I want the rusty part coming up. Maybe that's what I have to do. Maybe I have to cover, do it, stitch it down like that. I don't think there's going to be enough base because I often I'll take a piece of fabric that you're not going to see and I will pile my clustery things on top of that and stitch it down, which is what I did here. But I just don't think that's going to work here. So I'm going to take the green away. That's the last thing that's going to go on. And I know if I handle it a bunch, it's going to change the way it looks. And if I look at these, I think I can maybe sew them together. And to start with, it's just to, to tack them together. It just makes it so much easier when they're uh, not sliding all over the place. Now, of course, you can take your um, Fabri-Tac, absolutely. If you wanted to do that and just give it a little tack, you can take a little glue stick and tack it down just a little bit. And I do that sometimes, but I'm not doing it this time. I may wish I had. <laughs> that hindsight, you know, it's always 2020. All right, so we had this guy's going to come up here. And the little black one's going to go under and over. Okay, I'm liking that. I'm liking this. Yeah, a lot of times I find that I'll just take a glue stick and just sort of tack them together that way uh, because me and pins, what happens with me and pins is I stab myself. I mean, that's just the way it is. And I could use safety pins, but I'm, I'm also kind of lazy and impatient. I'm not sure which it's more of. It's probably more impatient than anything. So this is fiddly work. If you don't like fiddly work, this might not be for you. But uh, I like this kind of fiddly work. I like the idea that these are little tiny scraps that a lot of people would have just tossed away. And I didn't. It's just something about being able to just sort of uh, sculpt it with your fingers while you're stitching, <clears throat> it's never going to go down exactly the same way I laid it out, and that's kind of the excitement of it to me. Oh, I think I'm going to need another piece of cheesecloth. I think that might be what I'm going to need. All right, I have a lot of different cheesecloths. And the green's not bad. The brown's not bad. Not sure about that. There's more green. Oh dear, now I got another thought. Okay, I'm gonna save that. No, nope. nope, it was an idea. I tried it. I don't like it. Okay, <clears throat> I am making a mess of this and I'm trying not to freak out. Okay, it's not a freak out. Not, not to get upset with myself is what it is. I don't wanna get upset with myself because it's getting smaller. I don't want it to get smaller. And the reason it's getting smaller is because I've done things like this. Okay. I think I managed to do that without cutting the thread. That was good. I can hear you. There's somebody out there saying, Susan, grab the stinking pins already. But I'm going to be stubborn and I'm not going to do it. <laughs> I'm not going to do it. 
All right, let's see what we got here. Now, a lot of times I will make my clusters up ahead of time, not thinking about a particular project. And I could have gone in and gone through my stash because I'm thinking about this color palette I'm working with. I'm thinking I probably have something, but I don't know. I like the idea of trying to grab what was on my desk and use, you know, enough so that I've got it balanced throughout the project and just working, you know, intuitively. And that, that's a whole idea of freeform art, you know. We could all sit down with fat quarters of the same piece of fabric and a half a yard of the same kind of lace that had all been dyed the same colors and the same embroidery threads and the same yarns and a piece of doily cut from the same thing. We could all have the exact same pieces of textiles in our hands. And we would say, ready, set, go, and everybody's going to come out doing something completely different. And if not... Um, you know, there's a different kind of art. There's a kind of art where people just want the joy of, you know, maybe putting paint on the page. Or I think about um, the paint by number sets that we used to have when we were kids or the, the color by number things that are out now in a lot of the coloring books where they'll tell you put this color here or even, you know, apps for your, you know, phone that have got, you know, these are the things to do with the different colors. And there's a certain enjoyment that comes from that. It just doesn't happen to be mine. And that's okay. If that's something you enjoy doing, don't feel freaked out because somebody like me comes along and says, oh, you should just, you know, throw all the rules out the window and don't do the colors where they said they should go. No. What I'm saying is you should do the kind of art that makes you happy. And if you want to do it your own way, don't let somebody convince you that your way is wrong because they're doing it somewhere, you know, different. That, that's all I'm saying. All right, so if this is going to go hmm, kind of like that, I don't know, this one's going to come over here. I know that part. I know that part. Let's get another needle. Okay, so my needle, it's just one strand of floss. I'm going to put this aside, and I want to stitch this down, and then I want to stitch this down. And I like the way this is laying right like that. I think what I'm going to do is just stitch part of it and let the rest of it hang tack it down again if you decide you don't want it to move but whenever possible I like to just let the stuff hang down I could have chosen a color to match my little lace here but you know I kind of like it when there's just little stitches you know tacking down stitches in an accent color just adds one more little bit of something so I would love to know down in the comments um, what else you might like to see with regard to doing this type of textile art that seems to be my freeform wheeling dealing who knows what's going to happen next kind of thing I really appreciate all the kind words you guys have been giving me and I would love to inspire more of you so you know let me know what you'd like to see and I will see what I can do I would love to see if I could get this thing finished before Christmas but probably I don't know I don't know the um all the little knots that I want to add and seed stitches are going to take a while but this is my main project I'm not working on something else right now I will probably do a lot of just uh, stitches in my live stream on Wednesday and I hope you're okay with some silences sometimes while I'm I'm stitching because I forget that I have the camera on I thought oh, I could go in and edit and add some music in those quiet times and sometimes maybe I will but I realize that the more pressure I put on myself to do on myself like there was two of me to do stuff the more pressure I put on myself to um, create more things in a video and do more things in a video the less likely I am to get them out in any kind of a timely fashion and I would like to um, I'd like to just to keep keep going that's what I want to do all right so this is down. It's doing just what I wanted to. It's coming right down here to the rest of the white. I should uh, put another th thread in and tack this down up here so it stays out of the way. And I can just start thinking about what I'm going to do at the top. And maybe I don't do anything. Maybe I just do a few knots around the top edge there to just draw you in. Also struggling because stitching takes time and it's like, oh, you know, who wants to sit through a gazillion minutes of stitching so I, I try 
I try to cut out all the unneeded parts, but so I guess there are longer videos, stitching videos out there. I don't know. You guys will have to let me know how you feel about them. I mean, I, I know everybody likes short videos, but it's kind of hard to do that with this kind of a project. So maybe I'll alternate. But I haven't done anything where I went from pretty much start to finish. I guess I actually started this in my live stream, so that would be part one, but I didn't label it as such. But I haven't done anything start to finish like this for quite some time. And because I might want to come back around and do some more, I think I'm going to leave this needle threaded and just leave it in the fabric like that and hope I don't stab myself right because I'm really good at that. Okay, so now I've got my lace tack down and I've got this. Okay, what am I worried about, right? Okay, so if this is going to come kind of over there, kind of like that, I think maybe, I think, and then where's my green? Now you can also, um, and I do this a lot of the times too, take a picture with your cell phone and then you can go back and remember how it was that you had something looking. But I find that even when I do that, stuff changes. All right, I like that sticking out there. So it's going to need something in the center. Oh, it needs my little t-shirt pieces. Did I tell you about those already? I can't remember. So this is just t-shirt material that I have colored in various ways. And when you cut it into these skinny little pieces, it kind of curls up and does all this neat stuff. I almost forgot about that. All right, so one of those, oh, that's where I started the whole wanting three things, huh? Yeah, I don't like the long one. That was easy. I just want the little ones sort of in here. Now, the other thing to be careful of is is it looking too much like this? I have little bits of the t-shirt material down here. I have it here, so I do want some up here, but I also don't want it to look like a cluster of the same thing. So that's got me wondering. Maybe instead of a lot, what we do is, that pikes might even be too big right there. Okay, this brown is not cooperating. I'll need to give it another little stitch. Maybe what it needs <clears throat> is a different color. All right, here's some more of the t-shirt material. A brown near the edge. If you cut it, you know, irregular edges, you can also get some really neat effects. All right, it's darker on this side, so that's the side that I would want to have showing. It's probably too thick like this. You know, and sometimes you try so hard to make something fit and it's just not the, not the thing to do, because that could be the case too. All right, so we're going to cut this really thin, which would have been easier before I started to curl it. And I think that's what we needed. We needed something a little darker up there to tie with the browns, I think. You agree with me? I hope so, because I think I'm going to stitch it down. And I could add my other little bits of robing up here too. Yeah, I, I think that's going to be it. Okay, so now the stitching really gets tricky. All the skinny pieces without a lot of backing there to hold on to them. I just kind of want to stab them just a little bit. How many of you would be reaching for the glue bottle right about now and saying, no, I'm not stitching like this? But I get stubborn about some of this stuff. It's like, no, I got to do it the way I had it in my head. All of this is going to be hand stitched. And you could also do some machine embroidery with it. Okay, see now I'm losing my green silk, which I kind of figured was going to happen because I was manhandling this, which is a little bit disappointing, but uh, we'll figure something out. I just want to get back down through the center anywhere I can. I have to figure out what I'm going to do with the green silk because I like it and I want to use it, but I might need to figure out a different way to do that. And I'm sure I've got some roving that's the same color, but the texture changes. You know, the texture of silk scraps versus wool scraps are completely different. All right, and this green is really bright, so I'm going to take some of it out 
so it's more of an accent and not calling attention to itself, kind of like the beads. So my angle is changed, which is fine. There's nothing wrong with that. It might turn out that I like it even better. And maybe just the tiniest bit of brown on top of there. Just, just the littlest piece. And maybe, not a lot of beads, but maybe just a single bead coming up through that center. So the other reason I like to, if possible, get a lot of this stitched together separately before I stick, stick it down is that then when I go to stick it down, if I need to move things around, attack in place, whoops, just untied my needle, untied it, unthreaded it. I grab a little bit more of this silk here. Alright, I think, I think everything is down. So now we're just going to make sure, except for the, the silk that wants to fall off. And it's okay. You know, I'm not going to go, oh my goodness, what happened? What am I going to do? I ruined it. Because I didn't ruin it. It's just evolving. All right, I think, and I can work with the green. So I do have a beading needle here. Let's see what we think about having... Yeah, just one bead in the center there. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to bring my thread up where I'm going to want the bead, and I'm going to take it off of that needle, and I'm going to switch to the beading needle. Yeah, it's going to be another one of those. You're not going to see it unless you're looking for it. And I might do just like three three random ones up here like I did on that other side. You'll know to look for them, but you won't always see them. Like the fairies in the forest, right? So I'm still looking for a name for this piece. So far all I have is a walk in the forest, which seems kind of generic. So if you have any suggestions, leave them down in the comments. And let's see, where do I want to do one more? I think we're going to have it like it's falling off over here. I think doing beads is definitely an art form. I look at pieces that have a lot of bead work and oftentimes I find them very beautiful to look at, but I can't even, my brain doesn't translate that into a design concept. So it's always kind of random for me and many times I end up going back and cutting beads off of whatever I've sewn them on because I'm just I, it's just not something I do a lot of. So uh, like anything else, you want to get better at it, you just need to practice. So I'm telling myself, okay, let's stretch. Let's use some of these beads, either that or de-stash them. All right. So now we have a few random beads, a few little dangly things. And I think that's in a completely different direction. And might be this one's just a little bit long. Maybe this is the one that's kind of long or kind of fat. That might be it. Let's see if we can. Not my sharpest scissors, but okay, I like that. And you did a whole bunch of these like long stringy things. It'd be like um, petals of a flower. All right, in this one, let me get it to curl up just a little bit. I might come back and cut some of that off. I don't know. All right, now we got to just decide where it's going to go. We want to be able to leave room for that, which is fine. It's not going to hit anything. Oh, that might be something to put over there. That might be. Now, a few minutes ago, I had an idea of something else to put with this, and my brain has short-circuited, and I don't remember what it was. Huh, I'm looking at what I've got over here and hmm. Don't want anything else hanging down. That might be kind of nice, but I'm thinking let's keep it simple. Let's keep it simple. Let's get my needle back and tack this baby down 
and call that a D for done for now. I still haven't decided how I'm going to deal with the backing, whether I'm going to just do some watered down matte medium around the edges and leave the back open. Um, you know, the back side of an embroidery piece, of any kind of a textile piece where there's a lot of hand stitching, you know, it's it's not the pretty stuff. It's so do you do do you leave it open like that or do you put some kind of a backing over it and so I don't know I'm I haven't made up my mind yet now I can always come back in and tack down more but right now the goal is just to say um, this is this is where it's going to live because I'm going to have to decide how I'm going to handle the silk and what else I'm going to do with it I already stabbed myself once with that needle up there so let's try to not do that again okay I'm going to say that that is looking pretty good. I'm probably going to come in with this and just sort of tack it carefully with some green threads onto here. And then I can just have a little bit of that loose. I think that that's going to be the way to handle it. Let me know what you think. And I think tonight I'm going to just be working on filling in more stitches along the couched area and then probably some more seed stitch that goes everywhere. I, I think that's what I'm going to do tonight or today uh, as soon as I get this uploaded. And I don't know, we'll, we'll see how far I get before this week's live stream. If I finish this before Wednesday, which I'm not thinking I will, but if I do, um, maybe I'll start something new. Thank you so much for watching. If you're not already a subscriber, I hope you hit the button and join the Facebook group where we share and support one another in our journey to create our art our way just because.